back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and to another episode of Transfer Talk. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the breaking news we heard last night that Tottenham are in talks with Sporting Lisbon over the potential transfer of Bruno Fernandes. I'm also going to take a look about uh, kind of where he's going to fit in if he's replacing Lacelso as our number one transfer target or if he is a, a replacement for Eriksen who may still leave this summer. So before I get started, if, you, if you're new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, what I do here is I do a lot of Transfer Talk videos like this. Um, I do match reviews whenever we play and I do a lot of interactive live streams to try and get your opinions on board. So if you want to see some of that content, press the subscribe button below the video and hit the notification bell as well so you get notified whenever I upload. So the news that broke last night was that Tottenham have entered into negotiations with Sporting Lisbon over Bruno Fernandes. Now these reports first broke about uh, the afternoon yesterday. Um, various reports in Portugal were claiming that a uh, Tottenham delegation had flown to Lisbon and were looking to conduct a lightning deal, as they called it, to sign Fernandes. Now, Lisbon have made it very clear over the, the duration of the window that they wanted about 65 to 70 million euros for Fernandes, who was subject to a lot of interest from Manchester United. Um, it is believed now that, that that valuation has dropped as we approach the end of the window, as they are kind of desperate to sell him. He is a player who does want to leave the club and has made that well known. Um, so about they're, now they're looking for about €60 million, Euros, which is in and around £54.6 million. Pounds. Um, he's a player who impressed a lot last season. He scored 20 league goals, 32 in all competitions, and he had he registered a, 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 lo a load of assists as well. So he's, he's a, a very creative player. He, uh, I mean, he, he does, he is spoken about as a really good player, but unlike a lot of people like that, when he gets on the pitch, he does show that. He has the numbers there to back that up. And... Well, he has been playing in the Portuguese league. It's not the best quality, but I, I do think you, you can't ignore numbers like that simply because of how high they are. So while we would be, we would be a bit reluctant to judge on what he's done in a league like that, I think he, he does have enough quality to kind of convert that into success in the Premier League. Now, as I was saying, it's it's kind of difficult to see whether he's replacing Giovanni Lo Celso as our number one transfer target or if it is Christian Eriksen that he's replacing. Now, in terms of Lo Celso, um, yesterday... The day before yesterday, there was a ton of reports that said we have now agreed a deal with Real Betis for about €60 million, Euro, the same as what uh, we could be paying for Fernandez. Um, of course, I made a video about it yesterday and everything. Um, I, I do think that those negotiations could be in a stage like that. Um, and as I've been saying, Betis want, wanted that amount of money. Um, you know, People were saying it's going to be closer to £70 million, pounds, but because of the, all the clauses in, Betis, in the contract with Betis, it was a lower fee they were looking for, and it looks like now that has been agreed. Um, he does want to join Tottenham. He's made that very clear. He's an Argentine, has uh, a great desire to work with Mauricio Pochettino. Um, he has been training with Real Betis this week. Now, that may suggest the, the negotiations aren't as far as we thought, but apparently personal terms are agreed between him and Tottenham. Now, the fact that that has been done, or apparently has been done, that would kind of say that Betis are uh, expecting this deal to go through, and in order, in order to speed it up, they've given their player permission to talk to Tottenham. Um, now, he, as I said, he trained with Betis this week, but the reports continue to suggest that he is uh, a deal is done and it's only a matter of time before this one gets over the line. Um, personally, I, I don't think Fernandez is instead of Giovanni Lo Celso, unfortunately, because um, that may suggest instead it is Eriksen who's on his way out. Um, look, if we do get Fernandez and Lo Celso in, we can't really complain, because I'll, I'll move on to Eriksen now in a second, but it feels like Eriksen's departure would fund one of those deals and then one of the other deals would be just from the transfer budget that was there in the first place. So from Christian Eriksen's point of view, he over the last week, week and a half, he was he was really expected to sign that new contract that was offered to him by Tottenham, but it seems at the moment as though that isn't the case anymore. Um, there are reports saying he was approached by Real Madrid during our time in Germany for the Audi Cup, and that's kind of uh, drawn his attention away from Tottenham. And um, maybe, as people were saying, he looked a bit disinterested in the final against Bayern Munich. This could potentially be a reason why. Um, now Real Madrid's main transfer target, Paul Pogba, doesn't look like he's going to be leaving Manchester United this summer. And we always had the feeling that if they failed in their pursuit of Pogba, they would uh, rekindle their interest in Christian Eriksen. And unfortunately that does seem to be the case. Now there are other reports saying they're interested in Danny van de Beek from Ajax. But um, you kind of have to imagine Eriksen would be a better option for them. Now in terms of these three players, Eriksen, Lascelso and Fernandes, which two would I like to see at Tottenham? It's, it's a really difficult question because in terms of like solely the players and their quality, I would probably have to go with Eriksen and Lascelso in that position, because they're both. They're, Eriksen, first of all, is the best player of those three. He's proven himself uh, time and time again at a really high level. And between Lascelso and Fernandez, they're very similar players. 
Fernandez does have a better return, but I think Celso has been playing at a much higher level, and I think he's proven himself there more than Fernandez has. So I think Celso would be less of a risk if we were to bring him in. But if we're looking at it based on the situation that we're in at the moment, which I suppose we kind of have to, maybe Celso and Fernandez is our best option because they're more long term. Not only are they younger, but with Eriksen now one year left in his contract, even if he does sign this new contract, there's more than likely it would only be to retain value and to sell him for a higher fee next year. So I think at the moment, what we should be hoping for is Lacelso and Fernandez because, as I said, they're more long-term options. They're younger players. They obviously have more room to grow and they're going to be in our team longer than what Eriksen would be if he signed a new contract. So unfortunately, I do feel as though this could be the end for Christian Eriksen and that we will see Fernandez. Not unfortunate that we see them, but we see Fernandez and Lacelso come in this summer, which with only seven days left could... Uh, we could be in for a really exciting couple of a really exciting week and it's it's just getting a bit annoying at the moment, all these rumours that are going on. And like here on this channel like I do try and bring the most reliable ones. Like I'm not addressing the as I said earlier in the window I looked on Twitter and I could find thirty players we've been linked to in about five minutes. So what I do try and do is bring the most reliable links, the most reliable sources, um and the news that just I feel does have an element of truth to it. Um now another one is Ryan Sessignon. This is one that's been rumbling on for the entire window and it felt for a long time as though that was going to be completed. Then after Pochettino's interview against after the game against Real Madrid, he was very frustrated as we could all see. Um, and then reports were saying that Sessegnon's going to be staying at Fulham. Um, Scott Parker has said that he, he feels he will be there. Um, apparently ordeal to bring him rested on Nkudu's future and it looks now like he will be staying at Tottenham. But Sky Sports reported yesterday that the deal is still on and that they feel it will go ahead. Um, and this is one that could rumble down to deadline day. Um, which, again, look, if we're going to sign a player, we can't complain. But it it just brings back the question time and time again with Daniel Levy. Why doesn't he get these deals done earlier? Now, in terms of Lascelles and Fernandez, it does look like he may have saved 10 or 20 million on these deals. And that is a lot of money. Like Even though we are spending over 120, 130 million players on, on players this season, 10 to 20 million is a lot of money, especially for someone like Daniel Levy. So you, you kind of have to balance out what Pochettino wants and what Levy wants and personally I would be leaning towards what Pochettino wants spend that extra couple of million and get him those players in as early as he wants them and give them a pre-season with the team and they'll be first, first of all up to Pochettino's fitness standards which as we know are a whole lot higher than any other team like you know he does d double training sessions most days but get them integrated into the team let them know what their what their purpose in that team is it's it's so difficult to just walk into a team first game of the season and go out and play well against Aston Villa. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. But it's really easy for us to sit here and say, no, get those deals on early, spend that extra 10, 15 million, because we're not the ones who are going to be spending that money. It has absolutely no effect on us whatsoever. But from Daniel Levy's position, I'm kind of getting to the stage where you have to understand that as chairman of this club, um, he ultimately has to do the best that he can in terms of getting in the players that need to be brought in, but also spending as little money as possible. So we do have to, I suppose, sympathise with him in, in, in that uh, area of it. But if it is running the risk of Pochettino leaving the club, it's without a shadow of a doubt for him in his position worth that extra 10, 15, 20 million pounds. And I feel like it is only a matter of time before that becomes the case, unless Pochettino does eventually leave. Um, but it's something that I think we will see develop a lot over the next couple of years if that whole system stays in place, that Levy would be more inclined to buy these players earlier in the window. And, I mean, if he does get these deals in, we're in a really, really good position for this season. As I said, they need another couple of weeks to get uh, used to the style of play and get into the team properly. But having that amazing line, uh, midfield as, as a whole, I suppose, because that defensive midfield now has been strengthened. We've only made one signing, but now we have the likes of Winks, Sissoko and Dombele, Dyer. Um, players like Ali and Eriksen have been known to drop there in the past. Uh, Ericsson if he stays of course and then buying the striker we'd have Deli Ali, Eric Lamella, Hyman Son Lucas, uh, I'm going to put Nkudu in there because of how good he's been in pre-season and then two of Ericsson, Fernandez and Lacelso. so I think we're in a really great position if these deals get over the line and at the moment, at the moment it looks like there will be another one, two, potentially three deals over the line depending on one departure I suppose um, so leave in the comments below what you do think about this, this latest news and who you think Bruno Fernandez will be replacing in our in our plans for the season ahead. Um, it, as I said, if you haven't already subscribed, I do transfer talk, match reviews, and interactive live streams. So if you want some of that content, subscribe below and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video whenever I upload. Um, if you like this video, hit the like button. Thanks for watching.